today, we should at least make sure that there's three distinct labeled and in the specifications items. The water control layer, which is often we call a WRB, uh, the air control layer, and a continuous insulation. Now, many times we combine that water and air control layer into one product, but we don't have to, and I'll show you examples where we do not. Um, also, that water control layer doesn't always come out of a pail or off a roll. Um, sometimes it's part of the assembly. So for example, in glazing systems, the glass is the water control layer. Um, or in precast concrete, it's the precast concrete that's the water control layer. If we're talking about wood and steel light framed assemblies, yeah, we almost always are gonna get a off a roll or out of a pail WRP. And in those cases, we're almost always combining the performance of air barrier with water control. But you need to be clear about it because there are many options to separate water and air. And unless it's labeled, it's not, uh, confusion can, can reign. The reason I put ish behind continuous insulation is that, well, it's not always really continuous. In fact, there's a lot of debate about how continuous does it have to be. So when we attach cladding to the support structure and the enclosure, we actually penetrate the insulation layer. And that's one of the issues with, is it continuous insulation? How big of a connection is allowed? And there are many jurisdictions in Canada and the United States where they will ignore things like balconies penetrating through or floor slabs, both massive penetrations of the thermal control layer, but they're sort of just say, yeah, okay, it's hard, I give up. But on the other hand, there are jurisdictions where they're saying, that's not good enough. You need to develop technology and designs that make that insulation closer to continuous. Um, we're gonna explore some of the rain screen questions in a moment, 